Let's be honest. Sometimes it's really hard to truly love like Jesus loved others. And with that in mind, I'd like to talk about something that Jesus said, which I believe gives incredible insight on one of the biggest reasons on why we struggle to love. Jesus said that he who understands that he has been forgiven much is able to love much. This means that if you have an understanding of your transgressions and the things that you have done against God and the magnitude of forgiveness that has been afforded to you, then you will be able to extend that same forgiveness and mercy to others especially sinners and enemies of God, and therefore love them the way that Jesus would. I want to submit to you that it is easy to love a sinner if you understand how you are forgiven each and every day in great ways. But if you do believe that you are righteous and that you do not need much forgiveness from God, it will be much harder to love those who need forgiveness, the sinners. I want to tell you the story of what Jesus said in this parable. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain moneylender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. And when they could not pay, he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said, you have judged rightly. Then Turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I have entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves a little. Jesus tells the story of how when we owe something to someone and we have a large debt and someone else owes something to some the same person. Jesus tells an amazing parallel. He says that if there is a man who owes 50 denaries to someone. And there's another man who also owes 20 denaries to the same person. And he forgives both their debts. The one with the 50 denaries will be forgiven more. He will be more grateful because he had a larger debt that was forgiven of him. And in the same way, That is how our perceptions are. This is how the human nature works is when we understand our debts and we understand the magnitude of our debt and that magnitude of debt is suddenly taken away. We will be incredibly grateful. And if our debt was greater, we would be even more grateful. And so similarly, this is what he is saying. However, There is something ironic in this story. When Jesus was addressing the Pharisee, you need to understand that he was saying that this woman was a sinner and this woman was forgiven much. Therefore, she loves him more. But the irony is, is that the Pharisee didn't have less sin than that woman. The the irony is that the Pharisee thought That because he had less sin, he doesn't love as much then. But that's not what the scripture teaches. We read in James 2 verse 10, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. The Pharisee has certainly failed in some place 
of the law. For we read in 1 John 1 verse 8, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. 1 John 3 verse 4 says, Sin is the transgression of the law. Therefore, we cannot say that we have never transgressed the law, that we have never sinned. And so this Pharisee did sin. He was a man like us all. But the scriptures say that if you have two people, both with sin, the one has a greater amount of sin, a greater degree of sin than the other, a greater degree of breaking of the law. It doesn't matter. For if you keep the whole law, but you break just one part of it, you are guilty of all of it. There is no such thing as I am a little bit guilty. You are guilty of the whole law when you break one part. And this was the ironic matter is that Pharisee was just as condemned and just as lawless and just as sinful as that woman. The only difference was, was that the woman understood how much she's been forgiven while the Pharisee had too much pride. He had so much pride and self-righteousness that he thought that he was more righteous than he really was. He thought that by all his good deeds, his good deeds would be outweighing his bad deeds. That's how the human nature is. We think if we do a lot of good things, it outweighs the bad. So then it cancels it out. But that's not how it works before God or any real judge of this world. If a murderer comes before a judge and says, oh, well, judge, I have uh, taken, taken care of the poor and I have, you know, done all these good things. I helped the ladies cross the street. I did all these great things. Please just let go of the whole murder thing. That was just a one. So no, the judge won't listen to that. The judge will say you broke the law by murder. You are guilty of it and you will face the consequences of it. And so therefore, when we think we didn't, we don't have that much stuff, that much baggage, that much sin. We don't think we need that much forgiveness. The reality is, brothers and sisters, you need just as much forgiveness as the murderer, as the drug dealer, as the prostitute. I understand that I need forgiveness every single day. And because when we understand that, when we understand we need every day, we need forgiveness. We need a great amount of forgiveness because we have many sins and we fall short in many ways. Then we'll be able to understand how much we've been forgiven. And then we'll be able to love those who are just as wretched as we are, just maybe in another way. You see, when you understand how much you've been forgiven, you'll be able to show mercy and love and forgiveness to others. Because you know you're no better than they are. You see, brothers and sisters, here's the thing is we deceive ourselves by thinking when we start thinking we are better than someone else because we are no better than anyone else. The only one who makes us holy and has any goodness that can give us any goodness and value is God and his callings and his blessings on our life. That is all the best man in this world is the worst man if he does not have God. While the worst man of this world would be the best man if he has God. And so I invite you, if you struggle to love, ask the question, do I maybe consider myself more righteous than I am? Do I maybe think that I don't need as much forgiveness? I, I, I'm pretty righteous. I'm pretty well off. I don't need as much forgiveness from God, because if you think you don't need, if you think you're very righteous, you think you're fine, you just need a little bit of forgiveness here and there, then you won't be able to extend that mercy to others because you don't need that mercy. Why would anyone else need it? Right? But the reality is you just don't think you need it because you are blinded and deceived because of a self-righteous and ultimately a prideful heart. So I invite you to do introspection to see whether this is possibly why you struggle to love.